Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make a lush inspired solid cleansing balm. A cleansing balm is an oil-based cleanser that draws out toxins, impurities, dirt, and even oil. And the ingredients can vary from a blend of oils and a little bit of surfactant matter to a little bit of water. Sometimes it'll have an emulsifier in it. And Lush sells one called a Jade Roller. And this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of mung beans inside of it. And it's got a beautiful green color. And it just melts beautifully onto the skin. It's the perfect consistency. Now, as you can see, I've been using mine for quite some time now. And while using it, I was inspired to make one of my own. Now, of course, you never want to replicate or copy another maker or company's product. It's okay to be inspired by and to make something like it, but you definitely want to make it your own. Now, what I really like about the Lush brand of the Solid Cleansing Balm is it has a great skin feel. It goes right onto the skin and melts onto contact, so there's no drag on your skin when you use it, meaning it just goes right on really, really nicely. So for delicate facial areas, that's important that you're not tugging on your skin. So I really wanted to make something that had the same type of skin feel that the Lush brand bar has. Some of the things I don't like about the Lush brand bar is there are no emulsifiers um, or any type of acetyl alcohol. And so sometimes it can be a bit heavy if you're looking for something that you want to rinse off. The Lush brand one doesn't have um, very good rinse off properties, meaning you have to work a little bit harder to get, to get it off of your skin. So my goal was to create a solid cleansing balm that had the same type of skin feel, but I wanted to also add in some of those beautiful rinse off properties. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a full visual step-by-step -step process and tutorial of how to make my version of the Lush Jade Roller. So if you want the full written recipe and tutorial, please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe along with two years of archive recipes for just one small $5 pledge. And there's lots of other things to go take advantage of over there, different tiers like live class tiers, and ask me anything tiers and also we have consulting tiers and a few other things to take advantage of and there's still the coupon code rewards code available to anybody who is an existing patron or anyone who signs up as part of your patreon benefits to get a five dollar or ten dollar off coupon to onlinelabels.com so don't forget to take advantage of that it's a great deal and remember if you like this video and you like the content that you're seeing Please give this video a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below and share this video with a friend and please consider subscribing to my channel. All of this really helps out the YouTube algorithms. It helps me bring you what you wanna see and it's just a great easy way to help support my channel and bring you content. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the Lush brand version of this solid cleansing balm has a bunch of really nice ingredients in it. It has Maru Maru butter, organic mung beans, marula oil, hazelnut oil, fair trade shea butter, rice bran wax, chamomile vinegar, rose water, peppermint oil, clary sage, eucalyptus oil, geranium oil, water, gardenia extract, citral, which occurs naturally in essential oils to give it a citrus scent, citronello for fragrance, and uh, another ingredient that smells like roses called geraniol and limonene, a natural fragrance material, and linalool for natural fragrance, more fragrance, and then it has chlorophyll um, that they get from alfalfa grass to color it that beautiful green color that you see. Now, for me, when you, we're working with rinse off type products, I like to keep my ingredients fairly inexpensive because again, you are just gonna be rinsing this off your skin, but I also wanted to make this decadent and luxurious feeling like the Lush Bar is. So my ingredients are gonna include cocoa butter, um, which is very high in antioxidants and naturally occurring stearic acid. So it's gonna give you a very good conditioning feel. 
and it's going to bring antioxidants to your skin. And it's a hard butter, so this is going to lend hardness to the bar. So we're just weighing out what we need here. Okay. And then just like the Lush bar, we are going to be adding in some shea butter. The shea butter is going to be our second hard butter that we're adding to this mixture, but it's also going to add, it's not as hard as the cocoa butter, so it does add a little bit of spreadability and softness to the bar, but it's great for anti-aging. It adds a lot of moisture to any product that you use it in. And again, it has a lot of antioxidants, just like the um, cocoa butter does. It's just a really, really good hydrating butter to add, and it's readily available. Okay. And then, unlike the Lush Bar, we are going to be adding in some emulsifying wax and some cetyl alcohol. And the reason we're doing this is because the emulsifying wax is actually going to help with the cleansing properties and the rinse off properties and it's going to add a nice conditioning feel to the bar. So what I'm using for my emulsifier is BTMS 50 and BTMS 50 is kind of hard to find right now but I did get this one from Brambleberry and BTMS 50 is going to emulsify um, when water hits it, it's going to turn the oils and the water into a kind of a lotion-like consistency if you're using it for those types of applications. In this application, it is going to be used for its beautiful like water and oil binding properties. So it's going to help to grab the oil and help um, condition your skin and clear, clear the residue off your face. And then we're going to be adding in some cetyl alcohol to this as well. And the cetyl alcohol is going to help the bar stay a little bit hard. And we're not going to be using any waxes. Um, the cetyl alcohol is going to have beautiful rinse off conditioning properties, unlike a beeswax or a vegetable based wax where you can get a little bit more drag. So as this product melts onto your skin, actually, the cetyl alcohol is going to give it a silky type um, glide to it and also help with the rinse off properties along with that BTMS 50. Okay, and we're not adding too much of those because we do want the bar to melt nicely and not get too hard or too thick. Now we are gonna be adding in some liquid oil and my liquid oil of choice today is hemp seed oil. And I did get this container of hemp seed oil from Brambleberry. And the reason I'm using hemp seed oil is because I feel like it's gonna bring this product a little bit of a luxurious type feel to it. It's not too, too expensive of an oil, but it also has really, really good anti-inflammatory properties to it. So, it's great for redness or um, breakouts, inflamed skin. So it's a great one to use for the face. And also it's got that naturally kind of green color to it. So in likeness to the, in likeness to the Jade Roller by Lush, this is gonna give us a little bit of a natural green color. Okay, and then that is going to be it for the oils and butters. Okay, and then to this we're going to be adding in some French green clay. Now the French green clay is not something that the Lush Bar uses. However, I would like to use it for its detoxifying properties. All clays have really good detoxifying properties and are good for your face in particular. So we're going to be using the French green clay because I like the feel of this one. The density of it is perfect. It's not going to get too thick. Um, and it's going to give our bar a nice green color. So the way I'm going to go about doing this is I'm going to strain it. So I'm going to put my 
my little mesh strainer right there on top. This is what I'm using. I'm gonna put it right on top of here. I'm gonna tear out my scale. And then I'm gonna add my French green clay into this because I find when you heat up the oils, that's gonna make that's gonna make this much, much easier to disperse because it has a tendency to clump up. So right here, I'm just kind of pushing it through the wire mesh. And then I am going to heat up this entire mixture over a double boiler method. And I'm gonna do that until everything is melted down and my French green clay has no clumps um, or chunks sitting in it and everything is well distributed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a double boiler and then I'll bring you back while this is warming up to show you what the um, cool down ingredients are and what we're gonna be adding to the rest of this formula. Okay, now for our cool down ingredients here, which are still gonna be added at the formula at a pretty high heat, but they're not gonna be heated down with everything. We are gonna be adding in some distilled water. And the reason why we're using distilled water here is because it really does help with the emulsifying properties of this cleansing balm and it actually helps the spreadability and it will help the, um, the bar to cure and to cool down with no, you know how sometimes you can make conditioner bars or other type massage bars um, and then it cures out a little bit bumpy on the top. This will ensure that it cures out very, very smooth on the backs and you won't, we won't get any of those bumps. So we are using distilled water and then to the distilled water, I'm gonna be adding in some Optifin preservative and we're using Optifin preservative because it, it can be added in to formulas at a higher temperature. So this is the one that you can add in at 176 degrees. And I'm using this because we're gonna be adding it into the formula when the formula is still quite warm. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is get the little scale out and we are going to weigh out the essential oil blend that we're going to be using. Now the Lush one smells very much like eucalyptus and there is some eucalyptus in the Lush bar. So we're going to be using a little bit of eucalyptus. It also smells citrusy. Um, so in an, an attempt to make it smell a little bit like that one, we're going to go ahead and use eucalyptus essential oil. And then I'm also going to be using some, let's say a cubeba, which smells just like an herbally kind of lemon smell. So we're going to be adding in the eucalyptus. I'm weighing this off separately because it's such a small amount that my bigger scale sometimes isn't as accurate. Okay. There's the eucalyptus. Now we're going to be adding in the litsea. Okay, and then I'm gonna combine the essential oil with my water and Optifin mixture here. And just get this all ready to mix into my melted down ingredients.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and then I'll bring you back when everything is melted down and ready to be combined. Okay, so everything is sufficiently melted down and the French green clay is very nice, nicely distributed all through here. And we're sitting right around the 160 to 165 range. So it's okay to go ahead and add in these liquid ingredients. And then we're gonna give it a good mix. Now, we cannot go pouring this directly into our mold because it doesn't have any waxes. It has no beeswax or candelilla wax or anything like that. So the high amount of cocoa butter in this recipe means that this recipe needs to be tempered, meaning it's got to go through a process of cooling down, stirring, cooling down and stirring until it's practically starting to set up a little bit. And trust me when I say, if you don't follow that method with your cocoa butter, the cocoa butter will not cool down and come back together the right way. It will become a mushy, kind of not really set up bar. So I'm gonna pop this into the freezer for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna check it after 10 minutes and give it a stir. And I'm gonna do that every 10 minutes until this is starting to kind of cling to the sides of the glass and set up. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the freezer now. And then I'm gonna be right back to prepare the mold. Okay, so this is the mold that I'm gonna be using today. It's got these little tiny um, round cavities in them. I think they, they don't even hold maybe about two ounces or less. Um, and it came from Crafter's Choice. I've had it for a really long time, but this is a really good size for a facial bar of soap or this type of application that we're making today. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to go ahead and line the bottom with a little bit of mung beans. Now, you guys um, saw in the Lush Bar that I showed you at the beginning of the video that there are mung beans inside the facial bar. And the reason for the mung beans is they are very round and smooth. And like a jade roller, if you guys are familiar with those, those are those really popular type of roller ball. Um, they come on a wand and you roll it, you can roll serums onto your face with them. And they're supposed to be, jade is supposed to be um, very good in helping the circulation. So when you use the jade roller with your serums, it's supposed to help get the serum spread evenly and it's supposed to draw circulation to your skin. And so with this bar that I showed you earlier with the jade roller bar, um, the mung beans are supposed to act the same way as a jade roller. So they're just very smooth, round, and they uh, draw moisture or circulation to your skin when it kind of slowly glides across your skin, like a massage. So what I don't really like about the bar that I bought is the amount of mung beans that are in there. So I'm not gonna put too many in my cavities here. And I think I'm just gonna put them, try to keep them off to one side. So if you'd like to use them, you can. And then you also don't have to if you wanna use the other side of the bar and not use those because this one is distributed um, all the way through the bar. And sometimes I find it a bit harsh, to be honest. So we're just gonna go ahead and do like this. Keep those little mung beans on one side. And then when we pour the mixture in, they should set up nicely in there. Okay, so I will bring you right back when we're ready to go ahead and pour the formula into the, into the mold. Okay, so after several rounds of taking this in and out of the freezer and stirring it. It is finally ready to go ahead and pour into our mold, but I just wanted to give you a visual of what this looks like when it's ready to pour. It almost resembles kind of a medium to thick trace 
when you're working with cold process soap or if you're not familiar with cold process soap kind of like um, a thinned out pudding so if it gets much more set up than this it's kind of hard to pour so I like to stop right here with the freezing method but you can kind of start to feel it set up on the bottom of the container and also setting up along the sides of the container but you can feel it sticking and clinging so once it gets to this point it's a good pouring temperature and the glass itself is very cool to the touch okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and get my mold ready and then we're gonna go ahead and slowly pour now it's gonna start to set up quickly at this point so it's a good idea to get it in the mold And then you want to get this in the freezer. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the freezer. And then we will go ahead and bring you back when we're ready to go ahead and pop these out of the mold. And then I'm going to give you a bit of a use demo. Okay, these have been in the freezer now for about 20 minutes and they're all hardened up and ready to pop out of the mold. So we're just going to go ahead and There you go. And there they are. Okay, I'll be right back to show you how these work on the face. Okay, I am back to give you a little bit of a product demo here to see how this really does take off oil and makeup and dirt. And so I've worn some really pigmented eyeshadow today so you can see just exactly how these work. I've had a few setting up for my test batches here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use one that I've had for a little while now. So all you do is you just take the bar and you just slowly glide it across your face and let me tell you, it's just melting so nicely right into the skin and you just kind of work it in and it smells very, very refreshing and just really, really good. So you do that until you get a nice coating and then you can even use it to take off. I just want to show you how it takes off the eye makeup. I'm going to show you this so that you can see in comparison to the other eye. See that? It basically just kind of erases it and takes it right off. So you just work it in and then you can take your fingers and just kind of massage it in. Like you would doing like you would do if you were working in a lather of course this is not going to work up a lather and then you take a microfiber facial cloth and you just wet it in some warm water and then you just remove it You could use any washcloth, I suppose, but there's my makeup, my face makeup, you can see. And it just leaves your skin feeling really silky and smooth and there's no oil residue left because of the beautiful emulsifier we used. And there you go. The only thing is, is I wouldn't recommend taking off mascara. I don't think it does a very good job of taking off mascara. Um, well, maybe it would if you're not using like a waterproof type of mascara, but I've just found it 
works better to use makeup remover or soap and water. And there you have it everybody. That's how you make a beautiful Lush inspired cleansing balm, solid cleansing balm. I hope you really liked this video. I hope it inspired you. If it did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below and share this video with a friend and subscribe to my channel. Catch you on the next video. Keep shining. Bye.